2019. My name is Darth Arma, joined by the very awesome to comment it with Monkey Business. That's I've me. had an incredible time this weekend. Uh oh, I got Girthlang Shang, right? Uh. I no, should be. Gonna, yeah, should be, yeah, but yeah, I don't know. I guess they are starting right away. I thought they were going to queue up and let us know, but yeah, it should be. No, I'm sorry. Sonic Fox, they're, they're, this is, they already met in the bracket. This isn't top eight. Oh, like they're just using the setup. Oh, yeah. just casuals. This yeah. is casual, so right. don't worry. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, shook. <laughs> you shook yeah. me. Your, your panic kind of ran through me. But now, yes. now, now, now I remember. Yeah, they, they did play. They did play. It's not dissipating through the stream viewers anymore. Yes. So... Uh, Gurr and Sonic Fox actually met in winner's top 16, where Gurr uh, knocked Sonic Fox into the lower bracket. Sonic Fox, of course, fighting his way out, as we all expected him to. And again, this is just casuals here. Not sure who's using Shang or not. Most likely Gurr, as Arturo called it. But we're going to try to get something situated for everyone at home. And again, like I said a million times yesterday, you guys can all follow along on Smash.gg. All you got to do is look for Defend the North 2019, and you can see the bracket. You can see how the bracket's looking for this top eight, and you can see how all those top eight players got to where they got to today and who they had to run through to make it into this very prestigious top eight. You could say it a million, one, a million, two, two million times, Arma. It wouldn't be any less important. Bracketology is a significant science oh, in yes. this world. You've got to understand it. And following along, it just makes for a more engaging experience. Yes, yes, follow. And we need to study bracketology ourselves in order to not have mistakes, such as thinking that Sonic Fox and Gurr were actually playing. There in we that go. Match between Cassie and Shang. Oh, yeah, it's uh, Gurr and uh, yes. Kevo X Reborn. It's okay. going to be Kevo Reborn, a.k.a., or, you know, the, the player formerly known as Kevo Demand, now Kevo Reborn. This is going to run back. This is definitely a run back from CEO where Kevo took it over Gurr. That's right. Now, let's yeah. see how Gurr can kind of change the tune a little bit here. I feel like he's a different player. He's, he's become a different player since then. And now with all of New York behind him, ready to cheer him on against the invader. Definitely the strongest invader here for Mortal Kombat 11 to defend the North. Yes, I, I, I think him is Cusco, also yes. playing Sonya out of Texas. From Kevo Reborn, we could also potentially see Reborn Scorpion. Um, Kevo showed me yesterday playing casual. Yeah, he yes. certainly has that character on deck, and so his name is thematically true. Kevo Reborn has Reborn at the ready. Oh, yes. So oh, yes. He will not be zoned out if Gurr has any game plan involving playing very carefully, zoning, blaming him out. Yes. Oh. Now, we saw this yesterday from Kevo Reborn. You know, a character I didn't really see him, you know, study too much. You, you mentioned him earlier. Uh, uh, today as a Sonya player, but right now Kevo Reborn highlighting and, and looking like going into a button check with Jackie. Yeah, yeah, we did see the Jackie in one match yesterday. He switched to it to uh, take a quick 2-1 against somebody. Chris G, I believe. Chris G it was, yes. So Chris G had to make it through in losers. So yes, these we'll guys... See him later as well. Yes, yes, Chris G still is in this top eight, along with, it seems like, every top eight here at Defend the North, but that's just the yeah. caliber of player that he is. I mean, so fundamentally sound. I can't reiterate that enough. I mean, this guy's reactions are second to none, I mean, to no one else. Reactions, and he, he knows how to dissect a game system and play to this use the system to his strengths. Oh sure. Reborn sure. Scorpion a great character to do that with very flexible use of both defensive and offensive meter. He knows how to use Reborn's teleport cancel to mess with somebody's ability to counter poke. And once they're not counter poking, you can get away with other things and rush the opponent down even more effectively with Reborn Scorpion, who we've only seen him play that Central character so far in MK11. And it's a great fit. Here to fight her Not too many moves to remember, and they're all very good. <laughs> they are very good. We saw him taking it, taking down the uh, current Evo champion at CEO when he took out Rewind. And hold on, Gurr here getting that just successfully challenging there with that stand 1-1. One, one. A great hit confirming that down two to sniff out that throw. Yep, and so Kevin Reborn sniffs out the breakaway. It forces it to disappear. Gurr still with no wake-up options now. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, this is a first to three, not a first to two boys anymore here now that we are in the top eight. So this is all about the long game here. Big knee to the chest. Yeah, we will see all kinds of conditioning come out and surface that we maybe couldn't have seen yesterday in the first to twos. I'm excited to try and find it ourselves as we watch intently. Watch Gears is back and broken for the second time. Another back throw. Jackie will back throw a lot, knowing it gives her Oki and follow-ups amid screen. 
And what a conversion here by Kevo, canceling into that clinch and just making sure he does damage. Gur gonna be close to a last breath situation. He does have two bars, but it's not gonna matter because those are clean hits. Kevo reborn, getting that first round. Kevo reborn really taking advantage of his nine frame forward three mid with Jackie there. Finding great spots to always counter poke Garrus after his down ones. This time he counter pokes with a clinch. It might have been intended to be a down one clinch to try and try to counter poke. It works. So Kevo's got a lot of damage on the table already in round two. Now it looks like Kevo was looking for some kind of wake up buttons, maybe possibly a wake up up three there as he just backs off, but it's okay. He's right behind it, successfully understanding that Gur is not pressing buttons on those wake ups, so he's free to go. And there it goes the unsafe stuff, the low sand trap. Yeah, so dangerous. It's dangerous, and Gur's commitment to it is so dangerous. He almost always goes for 1 1 low, 15 50 mix up there, and he seems to get the crushing blow on the overhead only when it matters most and will instantly kill. He conditions so well for it, and he gets you so afraid all the time if Garrus is low, knowing that it'll do 15% if he aims it at you, and it's not really going to be too punishable from the ranges where he abuses most. Hey, look, it's a question flow. <laughs> right on cue as we talk about it. Uh, Jackie, a little bit more than 6% left on that health bar. Garrus just needs a few little jabs, and hold on! A big successful hit from Kevo! Breakaway's gone, but Fatal Blow's on the table. Oh, he just walks up and does it. Maybe looking for some kind of uh, delayed button press yes. from Gur, and so... Kevo keeps his Fatal Blow going into round three, and we go into round three. Gear still has no defense bars yet, but he'll get one soon. Great little offensive move here from Kevo Reborn as he jumps in. Gur fails to anti-air and fails to see that throw coming. And Kevo mixing it up a little bit with the back throw. We all talked about how great of an Oki system it was. And what a punish here from Gur throwing him back into the corner. Yeah, that's very smart of her to use the 1-1-1 one, one, one there. Switch sides instead of using the back 4-2. He loses some damage but gets the positioning that he wants. Now pushing Kevo back towards that position, but Kevo rolls under. Gets a throw. Kevo now in a great spot to try and corner Gur, where Jackie shines strongest, brightest. Oh, nothing. I think so shiny right now, now that Jackie's eyes are closed and she winces in pain from the down two crushing blow and takes a lot of damage and loses breakaway. Kevo's in a really rough spot now. A single more throw will kill. Gotta watch out for that fatal blow though. It could be the game changer here. He does have breakaway. He breaks away and he's in a bad spot. No wake up options. Gets the back throw here as Kevo reborn kind of just mixing it up here. Back to back here. And Gurr not battle, seeing it coming. Battle. Jumping oh, he in. Jumps over the throw. Great read from Gurr. Commitment. He was. It was live or die, and he chose jump, live, win. I mean, look at it. He he walked up to him, threw him twice, and I believe that was a throw attempt there on the third time. And Gur just kind of said, "You know what? I know you think that the most obvious thing Jackie for me to, to think is going to happen is the throw, so maybe I'm going to rule that out. Sometimes doing the same option multiple times is going to be what you need." Yeah, that's a, a classic kind of fighting game theory, the rule of three. Yes. People just aren't expected Lost to do the same thing three times. The, the same thing happens all over the world and in different parts of life. Comedy, right? A joke is not funny the third time. It's really funny, though, when you throw someone in a fighting game three times in a row because they never expect it. They think you'll quit it, too. It's, a, it's always an option. It's a viable option, especially in the moment. I mean, you're just as likely to keep doing it, especially if it's still working. Two successful yep. back throws from Kevin Reborn. Hey, why not go for it a third time? Oh, yeah. Ooh, Gur neutral jumps and gets the jump kick as Kevin tries to advance. With the knees there, throwing him over after the clinch. And right here, Cavalry Born just trying to space Ooh, it out there. Let's give him the massage. Yeah, that's a big, oh. big whiff there. You don't want to do that against Gears, especially not in the hands of Gur, where he can just aim that low sand trap exactly where you are and just take so much damage. Yeah, Gur's a sniper with that thing. He seems to find the crushing blow, not just in uh, punish situations, but also can counter hit with you with it. He knows exactly when to get that crushing blow and spends it at very wise times. Has a huge life lead now, still as a result of only that down back one from Giris. Good block, though. Kevo takes a turn, takes the breakaway away. And what a reversal throw there. Sometimes that is a great answer. Instead of just Ooh, the look at usual that knee. poke back, just a reversal throw, a great way to mix things up. Ooh, Gur gets over. Doesn't quite get a full punish, but uses a down one. Doesn't need a full punish anymore. A single more poke will take it. Chip could also take it pretty quick for Giris here. Do you know if Jackie has any way to low profile Gears' 4212? That string right there that is applying chip. It's getting really close now. It's very, very close, but watch out. We have seven seconds left on the clock. Ooh. What's he going to do? The low sand trap. It hits successfully again, getting around the last breath mechanic. So 
nice and clean round victory here for Gurr. Yep, and chip was a huge factor there. It actually might have chipped as Kevin Reborn did run out of defense bar at that time. It's back now, though. Obviously, it always comes back when you get chipped out by it. Ooh, throws the roll. Gurr guessing correctly on his OP. Will he go for mids this time? Ooh, down four. Yeah, the spacing that. on Garrus is down four. When it pushes back so far and hit makes the low trap follow up pretty much unpunishable. It's, you'll yeah. see a lot of Garrus is doing it. It's a great anti wake up tech. You know, it really gets around different things. If you space it just right, you can make up three swift and go for a full combo punish there with the cancel. Yeah. We've seen a lot of ground pound moves being very effective in MK11, whether it's Gears using it to hit your wake ups or Jax and Sonya using it as their wake up threes. <laughs> oh, poking him there with a down four and out of the air, not really ready for the conversion, but hold on, ready to just take this momentum. Ooh. Gets the whiff throw, that is so scary, but Jackie, you know, has one of the best animations, the whiff animations from that forward yeah. throw or any throw. Very tough to punish. Very tough to spot this out. This is the ender, and so Gert uses the Fatal Blow from a safe range. Kevo only gets a small punish as a result. That's a crushing blow right there. Kevo really believed that he could just block that low, punish it, and take the round. Gert believed he could take the game on the crushing blow overhead, and so Kevo's in trouble now, down 0-2. You think we'll see a switch? Is it time to be reborn, reborn once again? Uh, I don't know if we're going to be seeing a switch, but I feel like I, I feel like Kevo has at least a lot of thinking to do. Yeah. Um, you know, did. it wasn't necessarily a blowout, especially not in that first game. Yep. You know, Kevo was able to take a round, but hold on, we're going Cassie Cage. Not sure if he's going to be using the the less seen Yas Queen. Yeah, well, it seems like he's loaded into it now. Yes. So Yas Queen has been selected. We got that shoulder, shoulder, shoulder on deck. And I wonder, I think he'll want to use Yas Queen's shoulder to kind of stress Gur out, going for um, a really fast advancing attack thing, can kind of nullify Gurus' big down four, four, three, and low sand trap ranges. He'll, he, I, Kev, um, Kevo with Cassie obviously has access to really strong pussy tools and big hit confirmable normals, but I think the shoulder is going to be an even bigger factor than that. We'll see how he uses it here. And right out the gate here, Gurr getting that low sand trap. Not a counter hit, so it's not going to activate any crushing blow. But hey, we all know Gears players love it for the end. Now, the special thing about this variation is that orb there that can just lead into combo extender after combo extender as long as you are on point with it. Yeah, and it's actually very useful for Cassie to have grounded combos in specifically this variation. She gets to nullify Breakaway very effectively in a way that most characters in the game just simply cannot do. Yes, so she'll will. be able to kill you with, regardless of you having two bars or not. Big combos, 25%. One fourth of your life, pretty consistent. Great duck and punish from Gurr. Yeah, we saw a little bit of that yesterday when Gurr is just fully showing that he knows the matchup, knows how to get against those strings as he took out Sonic Fox. But here, hold on, Kevo looking to write something else. Here gets the Ooh. back throw. Yeah, great stagger from Gurr. The first time he's done 1 1 without committing to an overhead or a low. And so it works out. Gurr bringing up the new tools in the first of three, boys. That's the type of thing that maybe we wouldn't have seen in the first of two, knowing that Gurr won the first two games. Yes, yes. Sometimes hey, it there's does. that shoulder, shoulder, shoulder. Yes, shoulder, a great way to get in. And Ooh. hold on, here comes the knee, the follow-up as Kevo Reborn commits to the whole thing. Let's yep. see if Gurr takes a note of that and decides to give him a forward roll next time. Yeah, and uh, maybe if uh, if Kevo can sniff out the back roll, he can commit into a special move at the end of the string instead of committing to just the whole string itself. Lots of ways to kind of maximize the damage in Oki situations. We also saw earlier um, Kevo was using the shoulder to try and punish on block the Gyrus low sand trap. He wasn't quite in range, but Gur now knows that that's a threat, so he might not be doing it as much. Great block there by Kevo Reborn. Knew exactly which way we were going in the 50-50 down. Wake Ooh. up buttons here from Gur, and this is going to be close to all she wrote. He drops Ooh, the drops end of it. Drops it at the end, but picks up another one, and so that's a 3-0 for Gur, making a strong statement advancing further in winners, hardly breaking a sweat.